beings in the chat. And um, see, someone's also doing the minutes as well. Does anyone need to be my co-host or? That's usually out of my control, right? Victor, would you repeat what you said? Uh, you got cut off the very first part of what you said was cut off. I was just reminding people to use the, the chat. I mean, not to use the chat, but just to speak things out loud um, and just making sure that the minutes and everything are going to be recorded. Oh, thank you. So uh, the recording has started. So welcome to our January meeting for the police oversight panel. Um, we acknowledge the Arapaho, Ute, and Cheyenne tribes, the, the traditional custodians of the land on which the police oversight panel and Boulder Police Department operate and pay our respects to their elders past and present. So I'd also like to welcome um, any staff or members of the public or any press and welcome our panel members, those who are not feeling well, thank you for still being here. And um, just wanna also acknowledge just, you know, anything that has been challenging and looking forward and hopeful to starting off uh, this new year. Any members of the public will use the Q&A to answer any questions. Um, if there's a bigger issue that you can't answer in the Q&A, we'll save that for the public comment section, which will come at the end. Also, if you need to submit complaints, uh, you can go to our website at bouldercolorado.gov slash services slash police oversight, or you can email us directly at police oversight panel at bouldercolorado.gov. And these meetings are recorded and will be posted to our website. So I just want to share the agenda for tonight. So we will be approving the minutes, uh, just have our usual committee updates. We'll be asking people to share any special skills or strengths that they have. Um, Selena will also be talking about the poll and changing the meeting date or time. We'll talk about changing with the chief of police and meetings. Uh, discussion around email, the March panel retreat, and then we'll conclude with our report from the monitor, voting on our two cases, and concluding with public comment. And so with that, um, can we get a motion to approve, or do we have to read the minutes, or do we just make a motion to approve? I'm sorry, I'm running this for my first time, so... Do we need a motion to approve the December 13th minutes? Yeah, I motion to approve. We usually just motion to approve because it's with the stuff we send. We usually don't need to. Second. I second to approve. Thank you so much. And with that, um, we'll jump into our committee updates. And so, since I heard your voice last, Chico, um, are there updates from the Legacy Committee? Uh, we're having our first meeting of the year on the 25th, I think, if I got my dates right. <laughs> yes. So after that, we'll be able to give feedback on the February uh, meeting. And your committee is fully staffed and you're, you're good to go with that or... Do you need to recruit anyone? Um, we we can always uh, <laughs> we we can always have in more people if they want to come on board. Um, for now, there's Liz, Jason, Hadassah, and myself. So we we're okay. But if others want to come in on board, we'll we'll come them. Thank you so much, Chico. Appreciate um, everything you're doing over there. Um, our next committee is governance. Yep. Um, so uh, we have not had a meeting. We took a break for the holidays um, as we had one person traveling, had a lot of things going on. Um, so we will be resuming our meetings this month as well. Um, and currently it is just Madeline and myself. Um, and my last, my term ends in February. So Madeline will be needing some help um, if anybody is interested in the update of the bylaws. 
Thank you. And the date of your next upcoming meeting, I believe, is. Sorry, I just one second. The third Wednesday. Yeah, usually it's the third Wednesday. So January 17th. Correct. Yep. At six. Thank you, Hadassah. And um, our next committee is Community Engagement and Communications. Yeah, I can speak to that. We had a meeting on the 4th last week, and I guess we're going to be talking further about what we talked about, but we really um, took stock about um, how much we have to do as the community, um, with the community and ha how to engage people in um, in our community to learn and um about the pop and um, use it as much as possible. We also talk about the retreat that we're gonna have uh, coming up, um, all of us together um, to get to know each other, non-business non um, type of retreat. And so, um, yeah, and our meetings are, I believe every first Thursdays of the month um at least that was what happened this week <laughs> um and um um right now um we have soledad uh, madeline and myself and victor but um we are still a small group and victor being um co-chair um i don't know if you're gonna still be on that committee victor um and yeah, that's it for now. We have um, a, an agenda point, so we'll talk more later. Thank you. Thank you. And I also noticed you sent out an email. Was that also connected to the later point or was that around something? Okay. And I still plan to attend that committee, um, you know, as I can, so. Well, thank you for um, our panel updates. Uh, our next agenda item um, is basically an open conversation to see what strengths and skills that we have in the panel. Um, we may not know each other so well. And so if you have a specialty or a skill that could really be an asset to the group, now would be the time to talk about that. Uh, for example, when we had our CU student and data was his specialty, right? And he was Sam. He was all about data and was passionate about it, right? Um, so we're just going to make some time for everyone to go around and share, um, you know, what they see as a strength, a specialty, or a skill that they can bring to, um, you know, our group as an asset. Can I add something to that, Victor? Because um, that's something that we talked about um, with the um, engagement and communication um, committee. And that's what my email was about also is for you to think about it. It can be as small as, you know, you're good at, I don't know, with Excel, which is not a small thing, but you can be, you know, your skills, it doesn't have to be like, I'm a master at data. Um, Think about what you like to do and how that could be an asset for this group. And so it looks like we have two opportunities. You have a chance to respond during to the email, to the poll that she, she sent. And we also have a chance during this meeting just to discuss. Um, so would anyone like to share and discuss just some of the talents and skills that uh, they bring to the panel that we could use and maybe areas that we know, or maybe areas that we don't know. Yes, Milan. I can start. Um, um, I'm a linguist, I'm a translator. Um, I translate in English into French, but I have been doing that for many years. And so I would say my skill set is really being aware of what language needs we need, even if my Spanish is, is horrible right now, but um, just understanding communities who might not be speaking English and their needs. Also um, paying attention to um, accessibility um, 
Um, I'm also a technical translator, so I enjoy um, geeking out on websites or making sure that every, every button works <laughs> and all that. And I also um, enjoy um, designing communication posters when I have the time. Um, and I'll say that's that's it for now. I also enjoy cooking, baking bread, but that's secondary. Well, thank you for that. Hopefully we'll find out um, in March in person. Uh, go ahead, Chico. Well, uh, I was going to add a slight twist, uh, Victor, um, in terms of what we are passionate about. Um, so I come from the disability world. My son is special needs, uh, mental health. So that I'm passionate about that. So, uh, so anything to do with that, that's in my world. So that's, I bring that experience. In terms of uh, what I do, skills, and I'm a numbers guy. I deal with numbers every day, all day. I've dealt numbers. So numbers don't faz me in terms of research. Somebody paid me at one time in my past life to do research. So <laughs> I can read all day. I can research. So that's what I bring to the table. Thank you so much, Chico, and I appreciate you for, for sharing that. Uh, Lizzie? Yeah, thanks. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I am like have a half of a lost voice this week. Uh, I manage a data science team and do uh, data science work myself. I have a long history as an analyst, and I, I love doing that oh, kind of research know. and statistical analysis. So happy to jump in where previous panel members have left off on that front and help out where I can. Um, I also really like kind of process and figuring out how best to make things work smoothly, business processes, operational stuff. So if we have, you know, stuff that's tricky with how we share information or track things or um, all that kind of stuff, I'm I'm happy to work on that sort of thing as well. Thank you, Lizzie. Appreciate that. Um. I guess strengths, skills, or passions. Um, some of my passions are the unhoused community. I used to be a member of that community. Um, I'm on the board of directors of the Boulder Shelter for the Homeless, so I'm involved in um, just anything that has to do with you know the unhoused community. Um, it's definitely one of my my passions. I could talk about it all day long. Um, I also have a lived experience, so I knew Officer Equo what, nine years ago when I wasn't on the panel or maybe 12 years ago, right? And so I have this experience with the police that maybe some of you don't. Um, so I've sort of been there, done that, been through the system and come out shining. Um, but also I know what it's like. And so there are times where I, I use that experience in, you know, in cases, but also um, if you ever want to talk to me about some of these things, um, you know, I offer that story um, you know, as well. So that's just a couple of things. In my regular day job, I'm a recovery coach manager and I teach and train people how to be recovery coaches for a statewide grant. And I also supervise a statewide team of coaches um, across the state. Um, <clears throat> my name's Jason and uh, I'm a, an attorney, primarily criminal defense although I do some um, other things. Um, I have worked with the justice system for uh, over 26 years um, as a trial attorney and a public defender. Um, and now I'm a private lawyer. Um, so I've seen these many of these issues from a lot of different angles. Um, and I do have contacts in, in these, these areas. Um, this, somewhat, I don't even really know how to explain it, but as a part of my training, we um, work real hard to uh, understand and empathize with other people and 
trying to find ways um, to help others to, to see another person in a different way. So I think a skill that I have would, would be to, if, if two people were having trouble um, communicating or getting along, either separately or together, I think that I could help them um, to learn about the other one and, um, and have less tension or less uh, trouble in that way. Um, and same with situations. Um, and, and so if, if there is a situation where we're, um, we or some part of this group is having trouble with somebody because either they're not communicating um, and they're always angry with us, um, or, or we are dismissive of them because we're like, well, I can't help you because you're just yelling. Um, maybe I could, I could uh, help um, break that impasse and, and help us get to another spot. Um, be happy to discuss that more at another time. Thank you. I think that leaves just me. Um, Rasa, and I would say my specialty is um, I work as a quality manager, so auditing, um, putting together training programs, reviewing those training programs and policies, and ensuring that you're in compliance with all of those different facets. Um, I'm also bilingual, so I speak Spanish, not an official translator, but you know, I, I get by <laughs> and uh have put together doc training documents in Spanish as well. So. Sterling, you're also a member of this panel. Um, so could you share as well? Sure. Uh, so do you guys know I've been a police officer um, with the city of Boulder now for 21 years. In that time, um, I've uh, had a lot of roles. Um, I think things that would be um, helpful for this role uh, I've been a defensive tactics instructor and officer survival instructor. So a lot of the um, encounters that you, or cases that you guys read that have encounters that involve some sort of uh, physical contact with uh, the public, uh, would be good. That you know, I'm, I'd be happy to share my my thoughts on those when you um, on cases that you guys vote to uh, vote to look at. Um, I'm also a detective sergeant and previously a detective as well. So anything that deals with uh, cases involving detectives or case assignments, I'm happy to share my opinion on those as well. I think there's Madeline still. I'm not sure if she's up to it, but if you are Madeline. Uh, yeah, I, I'm here. I um, I'm basically, um, I come in on the advisors, um, role and um, management um, 40 plus years experience uh, at, at an executive senior executive corporate level um, and advisor so uh, I'm a problem solver and uh, so that's probably what I am uh, most excited about getting involved with Thank you. Thank you. Um, and there's still a chance to, you know, go a little bit more in depth in the email um, that was sent. And um, again, just spending a little bit of time to, you know, get to know these things could help make us just a more effective panel. So thank you everyone for sharing. And so um, the next one, I just want to hand this off to Selena. Hi everyone. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I have a bit of a dry cough going on. So i um, just going to share some data. Um, would you guys like me to share my screen so you guys are able to see the data or <clears throat> sure. would you like me to just um, share it over? You can share your screen. Okay. Let me see here. Okay. So this is the data that I um, collected uh, for the all panel meetings. Um, so the first question was, do you prefer quarterly or monthly in person? 50% uh, chose to do every other month. 
Um, 33% cho chose quarterly and 16% chose monthly. So it looks like uh, we are preferring every other month for an in-person meeting. Um, and then next question was, based on your availability, please choose two days you prefer to meet. Option one seems to be 50% chose Monday um, and then their option two to be uh, Wednesday. Um, so it looks like uh, other, than Wednesday, uh, other than Wednesday as our general meeting, um, looks like Monday is preferred. Um, next question was based on your availability, please choose two times, two meeting times you prefer to meet. Looks like for option one, um, the most popular were uh, 5.30 to 7.30 and 6 to 8 p.m. Um, option two looks like it was still 6, 6 to 8 p.m. and then 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Uh, next question, do you prefer the public to attend only virtually or in person? It looks like uh, virtually um, won that vote for 50%, um, 33% for in person and then other. Um, I looked at the other and it seemed like it was uh, both options. Uh, the following locations um, have been considered. Please rank what destination you prefer. Um, looks like a uh, majority of you voted for it doesn't matter. Um, and then looks like Penfield Tate was the next option. Uh, last question, um, these were just any thoughts that you guys had, um, and that was just a comment for um, thanking me to give a chance to give feedback. Um, let me see, let me share now the second one. Give me one second here. Okay, so first question for that um, was, based on your availability, please choose two days you prefer to meet. It looks like option one was a split decision, Monday or Tuesday, and then um, second option was Wednesday. So it looks like we got a vote on um, either a Monday or Tuesday. Um, uh, second question, based on your availability, please choose two uh, meeting times you prefer to meet. Looks like for option one, it was a split decision between all times. Um, and then option two looks like it was a split decision between all times as well. I'm sorry, Selena. Is this for the chief meeting, that, this poll? Yes. Okay. Could you go back one slide? I, I, I missed that. Uh, first okay, question? Yeah, okay. I got it. Thank you. Okay, next, um, I will just give you a second as well with this one. Um, so yeah, split decision between five, uh, 5.30 and then six. Look, the I just based it on um, previous meetings. It seems like you guys had two hours of uh, meeting time for each one. So I just um, opened that option for all of those. Um, third one, it seems like, uh, would, would, would you like to submit questions beforehand? It looks like uh, you guys preferred yes and no. Um, so split decision there as well. Um, and then I answered a follow-up question. If you answered yes to the previous question, how much time in advance and um, through which method would you like? So it says a week. Um, seems like someone said they didn't have strong feelings, but would like to collaborate a few list of questions. Um, and be prepared with data and information. Um, they, they just don't want to be restrictive with questions submitted beforehand and email list a couple days beforehand seems effective. So it seems like um, at least a week is preferred if questions are um, given. Uh, fifth question was, would you like to create an agenda in advance? It looks like you guys do prefer an agenda. So it seems like um, we will create an agenda for the next meeting we have. Uh, the following questions, um, or sorry, the following locations have been considered. Please rank what de destination you prefer. Looks like we preferred Penfield Tate over the Boulder Police Department. Um, so the seventh question, would there like to be food? Looks like, yes, there would like, you guys would like to, for there to be food. Um, please create your own input on the timeline. So it looks like you guys, um, I gave the options of you know, what timeline you guys would like to have um, during that day. Looks like you guys would like to eat first. Um, you guys would, uh, looks like there's a comment here. Food is great, but would like to discuss 
um, or have discussions with the chief. Um, so maybe we could start the meeting after everyone is served or and while we eat, or can we leave time in an agenda for questions on topics that are not necessarily in the agenda? Uh, 6.30 to 6.30 p.m., panel dinner and in introductions. 6.30 to 7.30, open discussion. Um, eat first, then chat. First half hour for scripted questions. After that, open forum for all other questions. No strong feelings on whether there's food. No, so selecting no, just in case it is complicates things. No strong feelings on timelines either. So it looks like maybe people want to eat first and then chat. Um, so it looks like uh, what other members from BPD would you like to meet? Uh, use, of for, use of force, uh, Sterling, um, not any at this point, none, and then data. So it looks like data, Sterling, and use of force. And then if there's anything else that you would like to consider for this meeting, um, it is important that, or I'm sorry, I'm going to read this comment. It is important for the chief uh, to attend these meetings, if she's not available, I'd like to at least meet two days notice so that we can change the agenda if necessary. And the deputy chief of whoever is replacing her has time to prepare to meet with us and actually answer our questions. Otherwise, it's just a waste of everyone's time. If there's a last minute urgent matter that prevent her from attending the meeting, a reason should be given to the panel and the meeting should be postponed by a week um, or a month most, but not the next quarter. So that is the data that I have collected. Um, I know that we were going to maybe chat a little bit about those results. So I will then now pass it over back to you, Victor. All right. Thank you for that. Um, looks like we had three votes missing, but we're going to just, um, you know, move forward with the data that we have. So first discussing the, the all panel meeting, what were some thoughts? on that. So just to summarize, it looks like we want to move in person every other month. Um, it looks like Mondays are better than Wednesdays, possibly moving it to an earlier time, uh, maybe not having the public attend. And if it's in person, we really don't care, but prefer not to have, prefer to have it um, at the Tate building. So just wanna open it up to thoughts, comments, suggestions. You can just, un go ahead, Lizzie. I'm curious to hear from the folks who wanted to keep, I, I feel like if we're in, in person and we have the space and maybe there are space constraints, but it seems nice to allow the public to come in person if they're more comfortable with that. I was, but I there might be things I'm not thinking of. Does anyone want to speak to the preference to have us be in person, but not allow the public to attend in person as well? Is it like the room? We don't really just have the right setup. That one I am not sure of. It would be a cozy environment if we did have the public there. And I mean, that's what we want though, right? Or am I wrong on that? And we've, we've never had a huge turnout, right? I mean, if we have three to five people, if we have the space, it feels like if being in person helps us see each other as people and kind of come together in a way that feels a little more like personal and we're all here to solve problems together, it feels like maybe we could extend that to the public as well. Um, I saw two hands, now I just see one. Chico? I think I I concur with Liz and 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 I'm curious because if on one hand we want the community to be involved in what we do, then we are asking them to come to do virtual. It's it's not going to succeed with our efforts of community engagement and getting them on board. So the more we interact in person, if possible the better. So I, I, I don't understand the virtual thing for the for the public. Oh, Milan, thank you, Chico. Um, yeah, I agree. I think that it would be good also to do both virtual and in person so that the members of the public who cannot make it for different reasons um, could attend the meeting virtually. So I would I would vote for uh, both. 
I'll make both available. If that's possible, I know it's difficult for to find the room, but. I think, you know, I think that online thing is factored into the, the room selection. Um, but I saw no one had an issue with moving the meeting till to Monday. So is that correct that we want to? I'm actually wondering uh, what which Monday of the month that would happen. Um, I actually have generally two meetings on Monday. The NAACP has their monthly meetings on Monday. So I'm I'm interested in, you know, I would like to be able to attend those meetings if possible. Um, and I think for trying to figure out for the NAACP, I think it's normally the first Monday of the month, I believe. Um, yes, it's the first Monday of the month. The last meeting was postponed by one week because of the first. Thank you. So maybe a follow up is making sure the other three members vote. So we have everyone's input and then we could make a more informed decision. Um, Lizzie, I see your hand. Yeah, just one note. I was just sort of looking at Mondays to to look ahead. It, we we're going to run into a lot of holidays as well, and that might be difficult to sort of handle. Do we want to hold them on holidays? Is that going to cause issues for our Boulder staff? Something to consider. Thank you. And Hadassah. Uh -huh. Thanks, Victor. Um, yeah, so I just uh, wanted to say, so I, I'm one of the people that did not vote since I will be leaving here shortly. Um, I didn't think it was right for my vote to sway, you know, what days I think you guys should be meeting. Um, and the other kind of just piece of information is, you, you know, do we want to implement this now or do you want to wait until new panelists come on board um, for their input as well. So we make sure that it's something that it, you know, everyone can make. Just something to think about. So thank you, that's an important point. Do we want to implement this in February? Um, and we still have some time to make that decision. Uh, go ahead, Sterling. So I don't remember from the last meeting, but I know there were some um, issues with uh, availability from some of these buildings. Um, so I don't know if, the, if we have schedules for Mondays for uh, rooms in those buildings that have both um, uh, capacity for us, public and uh, virtual. So that's something you probably want to consider as well before any other decisions would be made. Thank you, appreciate that. And Madeline? uh yes just a second uh yes okay um i was going to um second what hadassah said i think that's an excellent point to bring on the the new members to uh before we make that determination and also uh, i think i don't remember whether i was one of the ones to vote it or not but in, in case I wasn't Monday, um, I had I do have conflicts on uh, on a Monday. So, all right, thank you. I'm def I'm taking notes on this, and we'll also have the minutes. I will double check though, Victor, to make sure that I do vote. My vote is entered. All right, thank you, Madeline. Mm -hmm. So, moving on to the next portion is the meeting with the chief. Um, and so hopefully you guys saw the email, but there's been some changes um, where the chief is moving on to another job. And now that Redfern is the intern. Um, and so I just want to open up some thoughts to that. Again, to summarize, it looks like Mondays was a choice for the chief meeting. Um, is two hours long enough? There is a, a mix of the questions or having some pre ended questions and having sort of sort of freestyle, um, wanting to have an agenda, not at the department and um, not postponing it four months if something is missed. I would just say some thoughts on meeting with the chief is, 
I don't think it's a good idea to silo ourselves with the chief and not meet anyone else. Because as we see, if something happens with our relationship, now we're starting from scratch and we're strangers to these folks, right? So if there's a chance to have other people in the room who also have power and command, it's it's a ship. And so it's sort of all hands on deck. So why not meet some of the senior hands on deck, um, you know, is one of my thoughts. Um, if we would have met with Redfern, then we would already be sort of ahead, right? But, you know, we, anyway, that was the past. So what are the thoughts on um, meeting with the interim chief and the new chief? I might be misinterpreting. That's the same person, right? The interim chief is the new chief, right? Temporarily, and yes. Oh, you're saying meet now with the interim chief, but if we have a new permanent chief at some point, also meet with them? That's a great question. What does the group think? I, I don't think that should matter because if we have a schedule of quarterly meetings with the chief, it doesn't matter who is in that position, right? Yeah, so definitely meeting with the interim chief um, is the person in, you know in the command role. So I, I agree with what Chico said there. Does anyone feel differently? Milan? No, I don't. I don't feel differently. I I agree with that. Um, I I understood your question, Victor, as do we meet with other members of the BPD? Um, also, is that what you meant, or? Well, I meant the whole list of things that Selena summarized. Okay. Um, and that was just one of those. So that's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I would like maybe maybe one of those quarterly meetings should be like meeting a team of people from BPD representing different, all of these interests um, and having an exchange on that, that, that could be interesting to me, um, getting to know different roles and different people in different roles. Thank you. Other thoughts on the chief meeting or did the poll catch everyone's thoughts and feelings that Selena had shared? I think um, I think that's a great idea, Milan, to have um, other people present. Like we did when we did our initial training, we met with like PSU um, and uh, the hot team, and you know these other different teams. But that was really our only time that we met with them, and so I think it'd be really useful to have um, more opportunities for that to discuss and ask questions. Thank you, Hadassah. Selena? Yeah, um, just kind of going on, uh, continuing on the conversation. It looks like the next scheduled uh, quarterly meeting um, would not be until March. Looks like March 27th, if we're still go, sorry, if we're still going on, if we're still going with the um, quarterly meetings, it would still be March 27th. So I don't know if we wanted to maybe schedule something before that, um, just because we didn't have our last one, just kind of trying to, you know, know the logistics um, for scheduling purposes. It, and just to, to add to that, um, you know, Selena and I have been in contact with the department. We were trying to set something up um, to find the chief's availability in January. And the the date that was proposed was actually tonight, um, but because of the panel meeting, we we at, we were we were we're already in conversation about trying to do the makeup meeting. I guess I should say that um, March meeting I think falls during uh, Boulder Valley School District spring break also. Um, Chico. 
I would say we stick to March because that will give an opportunity for the new members to meet the chief as well. Or whoever is chief. Thank you. Michelle, I saw you raise your hand. You could use the Q&A feature. Um, and there's also will be a, a public comment section as well. So it looks like there, this is to continue to be discussed. So thank you everyone for uh, your feedback and participation. I, I mean, a, I, sorry, sorry Victor. Um, I mean, should we, should Selena and I try to get a meeting with the interim chief to make up for the uh, postponed December meeting? to try to schedule something either this month or hopefully early February? Or are you saying just move on to whatever we are going to do in March? I like the idea of two meetings since some folks have never had this opportunity, but also there could be changes. So what does the group think? My preference would probably be to go ahead and schedule the a meeting coming up and then we can meet again in the next quarter with the new new group of folks yeah i agree i mean i have i have never met with a chief i think uh, the only meeting that i've had was with I'd be available for a meeting this month or next. I'm happy to do, I'm happy to do two meetings. Well, that sounds good. I definitely have some questions I want answered, and I don't care who's answering, but, you know, um, so I hope that answers your question there, Sherry. Okay. My, uh, there, I don't know if it was my computer or Melen's computer, but something froze for a couple of moments, but it sounds like trying to do something um, in this to make up for December and then also schedule the, the March quarterly meeting. Um, expect to get some, some dates proposed. All right, thank you. Thank you. And then moving on, um, this next agenda item, I'm not sure who's leading this, but we're talking about the POP email. Sorry, I can take that. Um, so uh, we, I don't remember when it was, but whenever the POP email was set up, um, the panel at that point in time, we had a couple of, you know, they asked whether or not all panelists wanted to receive the email or if we wanted the co-chairs to be the ones receiving the email and they would disseminate the information to the rest of us. Um, and we voted at the time to have the co-chairs be the ones that are receiving the emails instead of everyone be flooded with the emails. Um, but I just kind of wanted to do a pulse check to see if that is still something that you guys would like to maintain um, or if we would like to have everyone just forwarded uh, the emails. I will say that, you know, I think uh, now my my vote would be to have everyone receive them um, just because I think that it's great information that we can all, we should, we, the community is writing the panel and thinking that the panel is getting the email. And I think that that would be um, useful for everyone, but open to suggestions. Yeah, Victor, go ahead. Is there a way to automate this where it just happens automatically if we yes. choose to make the change? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Um, I believe we just would tell IT and they would just automatically forward it to people that are on the panel. Would the responses to those emails still go through the co-chairs, though, even though everyone's seeing them? Or would that change as well? It's a good question. <laughs> I think we, we decide, you know, either if there is like select people um, responding, I think that the two options that had been proposed was either co-chair or communications committee. Mm -hmm. 
can you give us like a general idea of what the flow of emails looks like? Like how often do you get something? What what are the typical reasons you get emails? Just curious. Yeah. Um, so we generally will get um, community. So if there's a press inquiry um, or press is trying to contact us, that would come through that email. Um, generally, it's community members. Some of them have been, you know, they're wanting to submit a complaint. And so, um, you know, for, for that process, there is a, you know, we, we forward it to Sherry and the investigation is started or they're, they look into the investigation if there is one already started. Um, sometimes there's like, general questions about how things happen. Um, I would say those are the three main things that we get. Yeah, I would say you might get five to eight additional emails a month and maybe a couple of those are questions. A um, couple of those are from the fan club and <laughs> a couple of those um, or just some of that, the general city stuff. So it wouldn't overwhelm you, but also um, I agree with Hadassah, it's good with the intent of everyone has seen this versus only a small portion of the panel seeing it. Yeah, that sounds great. I'd love to, to get them. Any other thoughts, feelings? Do we want to take a vote today? Let's vote. vote. Let's vote. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're ready to vote. <laughs> All right, so let's say um, uh, votes for, so in favor of the whole panel receiving the police oversight emails as opposed to just the co-chairs. Um, yes, yeah. Votes for yes. One, two, three, four, five. Can I vote? Do I vote on this? I'm going to say yay if I'm allowed to vote. <laughs> okay, I think that's cool. Yeah, for us. Awesome. Yep, I see you, Madeline, and I see you, Milan. Thank you. Okay, so that was six. Um, so we have quorum there. Awesome. So we will talk to IT. Sorry, go ahead, Madeline. Do you have something else? No, your hand is still just up. No, it's just still up. I'm, I'm okay. I'm <laughs> no worries. You're good. You're good. Go ahead, Sherry. Um, thank you. Um, also, because of the same community member who brought this concern up, um, some other, an additional concern was that individual panel members' um, emails were not on the website. So I looked at some other boards and commissions, and I, I did not look at all of them, but my spot check of other boards and commissions were that um, the, the different um board or commission members did have their emails up on the website. So that was something that I also was going to just alert you to that right now the panel is out of step with um, some of the other boards or some from out of step with other boards and commissions for the city of Boulder. Thank you, Sherry. Um, for your previous work, um, did your panel members for your others, like do other cities, right? Cause we're, we're we're generally not compared to other boards and commissions because we're so different, but in terms of this type of work, is that pretty common? That I'm not sure. Um, Chicago did not have a community board or panel. Okay. No, they, they do now, it's very recent, but that was not something that we really, that I dealt with in my, in my career there. Okay. Maylan, I see your hand. Emails, I would like to have um, a good understanding of who has the responsibility responsibility to respond to those emails if there are, or if any of us can respond to them, or um, I think it would be
I think you're frozen, Milan. Oh. Yeah. Turn off your camera. It stopped at, um, I think it would be. <laughs> All right. Um, can you hear me? Hear you now. Gotcha. Okay. Sorry about that. I might have to um, get that on my phone again. Um, I think yeah, I was saying that um, if we were getting all these emails, um, I would like to. So anyway, I would like to know like what the I think you're you're freezing on us, Milan. Victor, do you want to jump in while Milan sorts out her sound? I see your hand. Sure. Um, I, maybe part of the question, um, you know, whose responsibility is it to answer these emails? Um, so historically in the past, a press question from the press needs to be answered within 48 hours. And so it's like, well, who's checking the emails every single day? And not everyone needs to check the emails all the time. Sometimes there's multiple emails. Um, and so that's why in the past, we put that responsibility on the co-chairs. Um, so it's it's it was their responsibility to promptly answer the emails. Um, and also, just so we gave consistent messaging um, on some things, if it was just a general question, and then also due to the sensitive nature of some of these emails, we would sometimes direct those to Sherry or to some other avenue other than to the panel because it was about um, a, a case or something like that. So I hope that answers some of the reasonings behind that. Yeah, thanks, Victor. That 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 was basically what I was asking. Do we have any thoughts on who like who we would like for point people for answering now? Do you guys want to, that to stay with the coaches or communications or maybe after we turn on the faucet and they drink the water, they can see you know, what it tastes like. And so let them get some emails for a couple of weeks and get comfortable with it and then maybe go from there. I'm sorry, Chico, go ahead. I would say we maintain the status quo. I mean, it worked well, where we had point, two points of contact, the chairpersons, and everybody knew that everything ran through them. And there was that coordinated effort and um responding accordingly so i i don't know whether we would have any other better system than that i agree <clears throat> i like the idea of like having everyone forwarded everything just for awareness but i don't necessarily think that means we should change anything related to response i think it it's great to keep that with the co-chairs as long as the co-chairs are okay with continuing to have that responsibility because I know you guys do take on a lot so would defer to you on that I'm I'm okay with it I think it's a um understanding you know and in, in terms of like if we want to be the co-chairs to remain the points of contact for press, then I think it also makes sense to have them be point of contact for community. Um, but again, I'm, I'm open to what you guys would prefer.
So we did vote that the emails will be going to everyone, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then just looking at the time, I don't know if we want to do the discussion around the panel retreat, start that now, or do we want to wait? Start after the break. Start after the break? Okay. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and take our five minute bio break and we'll start it at 7.30. So please be back at 7.35. Thank you, everyone. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much. I'll give everyone just another couple of seconds here to come back. And um, we'll start off with the um, March panel retreat slash meetup discussion. Is that a communications led com discussion? Um, oops. No, we don't hear you, Milan. Can't hear you. You're on mute? Oh, you're muted. You're muted, Milan. Okay, sorry about that. Um, too many gadgets in front of me. Um, <laughs> I think it could be a communication and engagement meeting. Um, um, led uh, discussion but um i really um i'm happy to do that but i'm also happy to let victor or you adhesa lead that i'll take notes for sure i know um one of the ideas around this retreat was um Again, once we have the full panel on board, spending some time to get to know each other. So when we have to make um, some of these tough decisions that we um, are not doing it with like complete strangers, um, we've already worked together for a long time, um, but we haven't spent some time to sort of team build and to sort of make some bonds. And so, we have enough meetings, so why not just have one meeting where we get to just eat food and have some community and connection? And hopefully that will also um, make it easier for us to do the, the harder work that we do. So the idea was having this way back when we talked about going to someone's house and having folks cook um, or maybe a potluck type of thing. Uh, I'm sick of meeting in city buildings, so it'd be nice to meet somewhere else. Um, but I'll just open it up to um, to the panel. Good idea, bad idea. What are others' thoughts or feelings? I'll just say I love the idea. I don't have great ideas about where and when, but happy we're doing it. I'll go ahead, Milan. Um I think it would be good to meet outside of the city building. The city building is for our official meetings um, and it would be much nicer to meet in a place that's close to nature or just uh, at someone's house, just so that we make the separation between that retreat where it's just for us to get to know each other and um, do some team building, but um, where we're not talking business. So I would vote to find a separate um, place. I like that. We have a budget, right? I guess another thing that's coming to mind is like, can people bring their kids, right? And so 
can we reduce the number of obstacles and barriers to us coming together? And if we can bring our kids and, you know, that could also be helpful. So just an idea. Right. Unfortunately, we'll not be with y'all anymore at this point. So, have fun. <laughs> Maybe we could do something where we pick a date by next meeting to sort of finalize it. Does that sound, or do we still need to do some more planning or can we move forward to making it official? Victor, I, please don't take my lack of participation as anything other than just being sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm happy to go. I think we should pick a date. Pick a date now or pick a date before the next meeting? Should we talk like big picture options before dates? Like, is this a breakfast? Is it a lunch? Is it dinner? Like, do we want to try to do it after a training session or something? Maybe we can talk broad strokes first and then pick a date. Yeah, I was thinking something on the weekend that is accessible. Uh, Milan and then Chico, I saw your hands. Oh, go ahead. I, I think I'm being spoiled to the polls. So <laughs> I like the idea of having these polls and everybody, you know, we have some questions, some, some options, and people select what they want. Sounds good. Thank you, Chico. In terms of the broad picture, I think that it's probably um, a half day type of thing. At least that's my that's my opinion. Where we have time to really be together, at least a half day um, on the weekend, um, morning, afternoon um, doesn't really matter for me. But um, um, so it would be like three four hours together, um, and. Um, yeah, I, I guess March between the meetings that we talked about earlier, uh, spring break, and I can't remember, I think at the very beginning of March, there's also the Boulder Film Festival. I don't know if any of us are going there, but things to take into account as well. So a poll might be a little bit easier. Just uh, staff has some guidance. Um, if you're doing the poll, I mean, are we only looking at weekend dates, or are we, or do we want um, this to include the possibility of of after hours on a work day? I think it, my 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 opinion is that as narrow as possible, um, we'll probably get the best results. I think that maybe tonight we could vote on, is it okay with everyone to have it on the weekend? And then we can do the poll on that. What do you think, Victor? Uh, Chico, uh, go ahead. Sorry, I forgot to lower my hand. <laughs> yeah, that sounds a good way to, to move this forward. Um, you know, selecting the weekend and just narrowing it down from there. But it seems like it's a, everyone thinks this is a good idea, though.
Okay. Well, city staff will put together a poll of, it sounds like weekend dates in March and then break it down by um, like, I guess, morning, midday or afternoon, I th I think, or, or I assume that those are the, the, that it's still mostly daytime that people are looking for, but that's just my assumption. That's what I had in mind. Um, I was just going to do, I was thinking just morning or afternoon. Um, but if you want to do midday as well, that's cool. Are we, are we feeling good about what we're putting on a poll, Sherry? I mean, right now we are just going to be doing that just to figure out the time period um, and then more details about how to fill that time period will have to be forthcoming. Okay, sounds good. All right, oh. Next, you are up for an IPM report. Can you... I think yes. you're the person who's sharing your screen. Yes, I will stop. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can people see the screen? Yep. Great. Thank you. Okay, now I need to figure out how to tab around on it. Okay, there we go. Okay, so full case file reviews completed in December of 2023 were one. Um, one completed and pending Boulder Police Department disposition one and the Final um, case review um, from 2023 cases, um, awaiting panel review that had to be rescheduled. Um, that is one, and it is uh, scheduled for tomorrow night. Uh, as we've discussed last month, I have all of the, the cases. I have this report posted for members of the public to see. Um, so... We had three cases that were closed this month. Um, I classified um, two complaints in the month of December. Two of them were misconduct, zero serious misconduct, zero community inquiries. There were zero interviews. I deemed one case thorough and complete. As we said before, there were three cases closed and the current or the docket um, current as of January 5th, 2024 is 13 cases. And that is the official report. Um, also, last month, I met with um, Kurt uh, from Housing and Human Services, the director of that. So we talked about areas where our work can align. And then I also met with the district attorney um, for Boulder County, Michael Doherty. Um, that was mostly to discuss um, some issues regarding the process and procedure regarding the officer involved shooting that happened on December 17th of 2023. I, again, if you had, if, 
there are community organizations that you're involved with or groups or events where you think it would be helpful for me to have a connection, to speak, or to more importantly, listen to what different um, organizations have to say about policing in Boulder um, or any issue related um, to policing. I definitely am interested in, you know, getting invitations to those sort of sorts of events or being informed in advance of events where it might be uh, beneficial for me to attend. Regarding uh, the panel recruitment selection, uh, we had the training this past or two days ago for the advisory committee that has been put together and they are in the process of reviewing applications for new panelists. And I'm just have on the agenda the March 2nd training just so people just to bring it up again to your awareness that there is an expectation that there will be a long day of training on March 2nd, which is a Saturday. Hadassah. Yeah, um, real quick, Sherry, just uh, wanted to confirm. So the panel recruitment, does it look like they're going to be on time to be starting in March? Like they'll be ready for March 2nd training? That is what we are hoping for. Okay, awesome. Thank you. If my expectation would be that if for some reason there is a... Um, some sort of change in the recruitment process that then that March 2nd training would probably um, have to get changed also. Okay, good to know. Any other questions or thoughts for Sherry before we move on to voting on cases today on the panel? How many applicants were there this round? There were 14 applicants this round. And if someone is interested, is there still time to submit an application? Um, I would have to think about that. Okay. <laughs> do you do you know of someone who missed the deadline? No, I was just wondering if there was anybody who, you know, if somebody's watching and they're like, oh, I want to submit an application. Um, sorry, my dog's being a terror. Um, then, you know, just thought that information would be useful for the public. They can always send, you know, someone can always send me an email and we can confer. But, um, you know, since the the advisory committee members are going through the applications right now, um, I'm, I'm not sure what the answer would be, to be perfectly honest. Okay, but the official deadline has passed. Yes, it has. Okay, awesome. Thank you. All right. Okay, so that will move on to voting on cases. Okay, and um, just as a reminder for the public, that these are case summaries, not complaint summaries. Um, summaries of things like the police camera footage, the evidence, the initial investigation, other complaints or extenuating circumstances. We'll be reading out the case numbers and the rule violations and we'll be voting accordingly. Um, and everything else will be, be um, remain private to protect co confidentiality. But again, um, as you saw at the um, IPM reports, all of the details are, are revealed, or not all the details, but the details that are able to be revealed to the public are in the IPM report. Um, okay, so the first case, we have two cases this month to vote on. The first one is MI 2023-34. And there are allegations against one officer for, sorry, five allegations. Um, looks like they are all rule one. Uh, one for um, domestic violence response, another well, two for domestic violence response, um, failure to comply with lethality assessment protocol, failure to attempt to locate the suspect, and um, another domestic violence response. So. So if I can see, please, hands yay for um, reviewing this case.
Okay, it looks like I have five so far. Six, correct, yeah. And I scale. Okay, and then votes not to review this case. We have no votes for no. Do we have any votes to abstain from voting? Okay. No one for Jason. Hmm. Okay. So I think this did not hit quorum, so, or it's over, crap, sorry, hold on, hold on one second. Is it quorum or over half is the question? I, um, I'm gonna change my vote to, to uh, vote yes. I, I, I'm not gonna, use my abstention in, in a way that would subverts the, the will of the group. Uh, that was not my intention. So let's read nope. it. No worries. Thank you, Jason. Okay, so we have six votes for yes, um, which would be quorum. So that would be a yes vote to review this case. Number 34, do we have people that would like to volunteer to review this case as of now? Do we have an idea, Sherry, if this investigation is complete and ready to be scheduled? Or are we going to be waiting a little bit longer? Um, this this is not anything that's ready to be scheduled. Okay. I will volunteer with the potential that I might be, um, you know, depending on when it is. And I see Lizzie. We have one more volunteer to review this case. I see you, Milen. We'll throw you on Jason as well as a alternate if needed or a fourth person. We can do that too. Um, all right. Next case is MI 2023-35. There is There are two allegations against one officer, a rule one allegation, um, uniforms, equipment, and appearance standards, and a rule eight violation um, for conduct. I can see yes votes. Milan, is can that ask, a yes? Oh, sorry. sorry, go ahead. Can I ask a question before we vote? Yes. So this is to uh, Officer Equo. Two questions. What is a hobble? Because I had to look it up. And number two, how can you tell if something belongs to the department or not? Is there a way to identify and say, oh, that's our gear because we tagged it, we identified it, we marked it. Thank you. Yeah, a hobble is a it's a leg restraint device. So it's um it's kind of a, a, a nylon um band that has a um, um a, like a buckle type of a loop attached to one end of it. Use it to um restrain somebody's legs. So you wrap it around their legs. Um and then you can uh, attach part of that to handcuffs to stop them from um, kicking or try to restrict their movement based on their uh, demeanor. Um, I'd have to look at the equipment to see uh, if it's um, whether it's department issued or uh, personal equipment. So I, I don't know. It's something I would have to see myself to tell you whether it's. Um, Is that a piece of equipment issued. that's generally marked by the department? The hobbles? The hobble? Yes. The, all hobble, the department issues hobbles. Um, so every yeah. officer should, um, this requires that they have a hobble with them. But does it have like their badge number or hobble number six no. to officer number seven? No, okay. no. An, an officer could put something on there um, to make it um, with their name or something on there, but it, that's not common practice. Thank you. Let's see. Thank you. 
All right, so let's do uh, votes for yay to review case number 35. See you, Lizzie, Chico, and Victor. That's four. Milen at five. Any votes for no today? Jason, I see you. And Madeline, are you able to raise a hand, yay or nay? Okay, so we have seven members present. Um, we have five votes for yes, one vote for no, one abstention. Um, in the past, we've also had people vote via email. So we do have one panelist that is sick and not present. Um, and the other panelist, I'm not sure. Um, and so not quite sure what to do here. Adasa, I think I've seen um, from watching some former panel meetings, I think there have been times where um, the panel has either asked for more information, but was presented with a case to vote on and instead deferred the vote until a later time. Okay. I mean, I don't know if that's, since yeah. there was a vote taken, I'm not sure if that's appropriate or not. We definitely have done that in the past. Um... Exact words for bylaws. Okay. So according to our bylaws, section 3B, um, if a quorum panel is present, the panel will vote and an affirmative vote of the majority is present. So that's majority for the seven present. So we can say that is a yes vote. Sorry, my brain is slow for reasons. Um, okay. You knew where to find the information though. Yes. So yes. <laughs> information retrieval is very important. Yes. Um, okay. So that was a yes vote to review that case. Um, do we have panelists that would like to volunteer to review this case? If not, we can just randomly assign them. We have, I see you Chico and Victor. You can throw me on that one too as well, Sherry. Or Milan, I see you as well. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Let me just go here and we will go to public comment. Just getting the watch ready here for us. Oh. Where did Lizzie go? Let's see. She is in the attendees. Somebody can promote her to panelists, please. Oh, I, oh, there we go. Awesome.
that, that's backwards, isn't it? Okay, that doesn't work. <laughs> hey, Hadassah. Yes. Um, we have two questions in the Q&A. Um, do you think we can answer those before we do open comment? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't see why not. Okay. So um, there was a question. It was asking, um, what is your schedule for meeting with community slash community groups? And who are on your agenda? I think that's in regards to your Sherry, to your question, Sherry, about meeting with community groups. Um, I have, I don't have a particular agenda. I have a list of community um and more like law enforcement type of entities that I hope to reach out to. Um, my, I do not have any sort of specific schedule determined as of yet. So I, some of it is ad hoc. I reached out to um, just yesterday or the day before mental health partners uh, as an entity to reach out to. Um, but I do not have a formalized schedule. I don't know if the, the question was to me or to the community engagement of the panel, though. Yeah, it seems like this um, was question. This question was earlier in the meeting. Okay, so maybe for community engagement in terms of meeting with groups. Do you have either Milan or Victor that would like to speak to that part? I know we don't have any meetings currently scheduled, but um, the idea was our next meeting was going to have less fanfare and just try to get out there and just have opportunities to meet people. So maybe if there's an event that we're showing up to, we can also let people know on our website um, was one of those ideas. Anything you would add to that? No, I think that's it. I mean, one of our um, main push this year is going to be to meet with um, our communities um, and to really create a um, connection with them, um, get to know them, get them to know us. Um, so that's that's what we've been talking about quite a bit. Um, so we're working on it. We don't have a schedule yet, though. And I'll also say, since Michelle asked the question, Sherry, if you want to, have you been to Central Park and spent some time down there? Um, if not, there's some definitely a different audience down there and some connections that could also be made. Thank you. I'll move on to the um, second question. Uh, it's uh, it's asking, um, what is the value and purpose of the POP having regular meetings with the chief? I'll just say, um... From the beginning, we were brand new and the chief was brand new. So going back three years, um, we were just gotten to the block. And so we had a lot of things that we didn't even have in place yet. And so part of it was we had to meet with the chief to sort of advocate for what we need. Um, we also were both learning at the same time. Um, and so it was that was definitely part of it. Um, the value in that is we were able to create some relationships, get things done, um, move forward in a collaborative spirit where it wasn't sort of this us against them, um, but it was more of, hey, we, we want things to be transparent. We want changes to happen. Um, and so with that process, like now we have possibly a new chief coming on. And so we don't want that person to be an adversary um, because we need their collaboration uh, to really do some systemic um, 
change and make also the de the department um if the chief trusts us then they can also trust us um as well I will add to that there were um there have been times so before this ordinance was voted into place um we did not have automatic um, meetings that were set up with the chief when there was a disagreement on disposition. And so there have been times in the past where um, we've used that meeting to sort of broach these 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 tougher cases where we did not reach an agreement on disposition. And someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that there have been past meetings with the chiefs that had um, like presentations by, I believe, like someone to like walk the panel through um, like very specific information about like how detective cases are assigned and reviewed and approved so that it can be topical in terms of this is an area that we would really like to dive deeper into. Also thinks it gives us more access to the information that we need and we can just do, you know, make some of those demands directly. And uh, in the in the past, whoever the chief was, they helped facilitate that versus being an obstacle to helping us get what we want done. If you do have any more questions, please let us know in the public comment that is coming up next. Um, so we'll go through and okay. Um, so for public comment, um, every member of the public will be asked if they'd like to comment and unmuted to answer. The public will get two unimpeded minutes to comment. And if there's interruption or loss of connection, the clock will be stopped. The co-chair um, will give verbal notice of time at 20 seconds to end, and the city staff will mute the feed at two minutes. Panelists may offer short responses at the end of comment, and the co-chair will pause after each comment to facilitate. Um, all right, so let's go through. And let me see if I can get this to show through. All right, Annette James, you can unmute if you would like to share a public comment. I'm just going to show the timer on my screen so you can see. Happy New Year. A um, couple of questions about the um, hiring or promotion of Redfern. Um, I'm just wondering if the POP um, has any um, comments based on his history um, on that. And also, um, do you have the authority or is it within your preview um, to look into his history as it related to the Elijah McClain uh, mischaracterization um, of that incident? And they hope that you guys will choose the answer. This is public comment that we hope get feedback. Um, and I would also like to just recommend that um, to the panel that you understand the gravity um, of the position that you have and how that influences community and our ability to feel safe and be safe. And um, as the NAACP, we speak out wholeheartedly and fully against Redfern. And we don't think it's more valuable to meet with chiefs and not with the public. So um, I would encourage you, this panel, to fulfill the mission that this originally, that this panel originally had, which was to build bridges between community and law enforcement. Thank you. Thank you, Annette. Stop your timer. I'm sorry, that was backwards. Does anybody have any comment from the panel?
my 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 main thought at this point was that we were um we we got our email notice i think it was either today or maybe or maybe yesterday um in terms of the change and so um yeah it was a uh, a surprise to say the least definitely um Those are, those are, that's what I have so far. Milan, I see you. Yeah, um, personally, I'm concerned. Um, uh, Chief Redford, or Interim Chief Redfern is coming from um, the Aurora Police Department. Um, after spending 25 years there, um, I'm really concerned because any any time you talk about um, to someone in law enforcement or the justice system about um, the APD, they say it's the worst in Colorado. And so I'm concerned about 25 years in the worst police department. Um, and then coming to Boulder and being the chief here, I'm, I'm, a, I'm concerned about the culture that it may bring um to the bpd but um so i'm i'm personally watching this very closely and i hope we all are um thank you thanks i for this question i guess i'd also say i don't I'm not aware that the ordinance gives us any purview to look into um, his specific job history the way that it is um, set up. And I don't know. Um, I'd have to look into it if there is a way to do a complaint based on not like an interaction, but um, like a hiring practice or anything like that. I'm not sure about that, but maybe we can, maybe we can investigate whether or not that is something that would be a com complaintable or it can go through the process, I guess, that we that we have. Sorry, go ahead, Chico. I think I would concur with Victor that uh, I think that's mm, the ask is outside our purview, what the, our authority is. Um, if there are any other issues that I think need to be raised outside, may, maybe as we go down the road with community engagement, with the legacy committee, those are things that we can bring out. Your hand again, Milan. Yes, sorry. Um, yeah, I think that as a panel, we have the at least the power of recommendation and we have the power of our own opinions. And, and I think whether we, you know, whether it's under a purview or not, I think considering our role in this community, I think it's very important for us to um, not shy away from this. Yes, I think we're all here to to do the duties that we're here to volunteer for. Um, and this isn't the first time we've been asked to do things outside of our league. And so hopefully we're trying to build an understanding of, yes, we are the panel, but there's limits to what we can do. And so um, 
we operate within those limits. Things are not perfect, and that's just sort of the way things are. So I just want to make that that clear as well. See you, Lucy. Yeah, thanks. I think um, I totally agree with <clears throat> all of these thoughts to sort of get a better understanding of the current policies in place and consider whether there's anything we might, you know, want to discuss recommending if, if we find anything like that. And I also think an opportunity for us is to use our time, you know, if we're able to schedule a meeting with the new interim chief over the next couple of weeks, I'd love to hear from him on all of these questions. And I think we have a unique opportunity to, to ask them. Um, so hoping we can take advantage of that well, that as well. Hey, Lizzie. Okay. There are no other comments. I will move on to the next community member. And which is Michelle, I see your hand. Let me allow you to unmute. Okay, uh, Michelle, you are able to unmute if you would like to, if you have any comments for us today. Hi guys, um, first I wanted to say Happy New Year's. Um, I also wanted to say that I'm, um, I'd like for the panel and all involved to read the article, Officers of Chemical Restraint. It starts out about Elijah McClain, but in the back, he talks about a paramedic who was put to the task of chemically sedating a woman. They unnamed him. They didn't name the woman. They didn't say what color I was, but I am that woman in the back of that article. Um, we have a problem here in Boulder. I don't know if we have it anymore, um, but I'd also like to say I'm sad that the chief is leaving, but I hope that she has great success in her future. I'd also like to say that, um, Officer Sterling, I didn't have any idea. You've been on the force for 21 years. Bless your heart. Thank you for your service. And I'd like the panel to know that Officer Sterling was the only officer present in my incident, which involved chemical sedation. And he was an officer I have on film telling another officer, which was a white officer, to get off my kneecaps as I was um, already hobbled and handcuffed behind my back and double strapped to a gurney. And Officer Sterling looked up and saw this officer kneeling on my kneecaps on top of the gurney while it was all this and bleeding from the mouth. And he also questioned about my chemical sedation as it was happening. He was the only officer to respond. His level of integrity, I feel safe with him going forward with him as a liaison. And um, I think everybody else should, including the community. I want everybody to know that NAACP has ignored my plight um, and related a lot of the dates and things of accomplishments that I would uh, otherwise be taking credit for. And I, I, I feel there's like a, almost a reverse prejudice. I understand everybody's need to feel safe, but I believe Redfern has a different perspective to be able to bring to the table for any future things like that. I believe he was put to the task, which I don't know any officer that would have picked to stay on and um, be put to the task of prosecuting other officers. He did his duty. Thank I you. believe- You've reached time. Thank you so much. Okay. Any other, any comments or responses to Michelle's comments? I just want to thank Michelle for um, for sharing that and appreciate her being here. And um, you are heard, Michelle. So thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Okay. Next person I have up to talk. Jude, I see your hand. Let me. Okay, you are able to unmute if you would like to comment. Yes, I'm Jude Landsman. I'm a vice president of um, NAACP Boulder County. Have been integrally involved um, in efforts to uh, to from times of Zaid Atkinson to have a police oversight in the call for police oversight. Um, 
Yes, Victor, I hear you. It's not perfect. Uh, we know that. Um, what is of concern uh, is the emphasis on communicating with the police, communicating with the chief, and um, know that the previous panel did not ever meet with the NAACP. They did not meet with El Centro Amistad. They did not make it a priority to uh, gain insight and be a voice for community organizations. We will continue to call for the police oversight panel to be an effective uh, organization and an effective uh, means and probably one of the only means for community members to feel that their voice can be heard with policing. So I would really encourage you to listen to the community. Um, community members should not feel safe with Interim Chief Redfern. Um, our branch did a lot of research, meticulous research, because we were called out yes. on Redfern. So please take us seriously. Um, we, we, it's not, we, we, we're not intend to be adversarial. We intend to be a voice. Do I have two seconds left? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Jude. Do we have any panelists that would like to respond or comment? I would just say that um, when we were doing, um, when we went on a moratorium, we had um, two, maybe three public meetings um, to get comment. We worked very hard to bring in public voices. Um, we had sent out many press releases, and I do acknowledge that also previous to those meetings, we only had one meeting in, in maybe two years, um, but we had definitely done things in the past six months that we have not done before. Um, and so I, I just want to acknowledge that we have increased um, our community presence in the last few months. Um, if you happen to, to miss those meetings that we had. Thank you, Victor. Okay, we have one more community member. We will allow you to unmute yourself. Looks like we have Min, Min Glenda. You can unmute if you have any public comment for us today. are speaking, um, you have the ability to unmute yourself if you would like to comment. <clears throat> I'm gonna take that as a no for now. If you do have any other comments or questions, you do still have the ability to unmute while we wrap up our meeting. All right. Well, um, thank you, everyone, for being present tonight. Looks like we will be finishing right at 8.30 today. Um, so thank you for your time and um, thoughts and input, and we look forward to seeing you at the next meeting. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Uh, thank you, and good evening.